baby of the 60s. So um, I can remember watching the 1970 World Cup, watching the Brazilian team be brilliant um, and being wowed by them. Um, so to see the World Cup and then to eventually play in one himself um, probably would be the height of my career um, because I was eight watching them play Mexico City and then I was playing them myself 16 years later. People who know me will probably know who I'm going to say. Um, I'll try and elaborate a little bit on um, how good Maradona was. Um, I played against Maradona for Forest in a pre-season friendly at Barcelona um, in 84 um, and we'd heard about him that he was a bit special. The pitch was in an absolute disgraceful state, even pre-season, and there were mounds everywhere and it was still lashing down the rain. He came out and obviously he was, he was smaller than me, five foot five, but built like a tank. In, in the game where we were trying to try, dribble through water a little bit, or try and pass it through. He was flicking the ball up like a penguin does and volleying off everywhere and to, to the people and it arrived to the people where it was supposed to go. His ball mastery was frightening. I'd never seen anything like it. Um, and it was all left foot. It was all left foot, but you, you couldn't deal with his left foot. It was just, it was, it was just too good. It was a wand. His, his dragging of a team through to a World Cup final and to win it on his own was just something I'd never seen before. And people nowadays talk about Messi and he's exactly the same. Two peas in a pod from a little country really, football in terms of population. Um, it, it's, a, it's a freak that they produce two players like that. Um, he was very clever, it, it, his man management was brilliant. He, he knew me from a kid and he knew how to push the buttons with me to get me wound up because he knew I was a better player when I was angry. Uh, and he knew in some games pre-season or pre-match he would say something sarcastic about my gear my haircut in, in a funny way that people would laugh at, that he knew it would annoy me. And he'd remember things like an elephant, unbelievable elephant's memory, that he'd remember something he'd said four months before that and he'd bring it up at the right time. I've seen lots of people squirm in the seats. I was one at times. I've seen lots of people being given a one-liner and be totally embarrassed uh, and hurt. And then on other occasions, I've seen him swarm over people with, with so much praise and over the top praise really sometimes that it, it, was, it was a bit creepy really, a bit, a bit weird. It was just so over the top his praise, but that's how he was. He was completely black and white. His teams always won. In general, his teams are always in, in the, the, uh, the headlines. So if you were doing well at Nottingham Forest, then in general, you'd be talked about by the press and by the TV, and he would make sure, if he wanted you in the England squad and thought you deserved it, he could push your case. He was a very, very powerful man, um, and for 20 years he had ruled the roost. You have to sink everything into it, otherwise you won't survive. Um, you have to be physically strong now, even if you are smallish, you have to be able to deal with, the game has gone big and gone wide and gone technical. So if you aren't big, and technical and mentally strong, then you won't survive. We've got loads of players coming through um, and they're all dead young. That, that's the thing. The England squad now is as young as it's ever been, really. Um, it's a young man's game now. You know, you can be 18 like the boy at Chelsea, Callum Hudson and Doyle, you know, and buy a unit, won't you, for 35 million. You've not played for Chelsea for 35 million. It's frightening the money. But I'm hopeful for England this summer, I think, or next summer. Um, because of the semi-final and the final at Wembley. It was this year's Champions League games between Barcelona and Liverpool, and Liverpool were 3-0 down and fought back and won 4-3. And it was the Man City Spurs quarter-final, second leg, on the last kick of the match, by a VAR decision, by that much, sent, Man City, sent Spurs, Spurs through. So on Spurs on that occasion, they had both the decisions go for them, and then they got to the semi-final when when two nil down in the last half now but those those three games when you're seeing big guns going after it hell for leather and there's nothing in between them and eventually it swings on a tiny little thing like that mm -hmm.